Next question. In your last teleseminar, you recommended implementing your low-carb approach for the non-diabetic children of type 1s to reduce their risk. Why would feeding my non-diabetic children a low-carb diet reduce their risk of type 1 diabetes? This is a common question. Okay. Be because elevated blood sugars are toxic to beta cells. <laughs> um, we cite in my book the story of uh, uh, Gerald Raven and the biostatter. In fact, I have a picture of the biostatter on my desktop uh, that I show to patients whom I uh, am training. Uh, he demonstrated beta cell recovery when the blood sugars of type 2 uh, diabetics were brought down to what they thought in those days was normal for two weeks. So if you can get, now maybe my logic is wrong, but I say to myself, if you can get beta cell recovery from two weeks of normal blood sugars, you're also going to uh, have reduced, to reduced toxicity by continuous normal blood sugars. Um, now, uh, type 1 diabetes is a, a, a continuum. It doesn't hit a kid all of a sudden. It uh, involves multiple immune attacks, and they could, they could be small attacks. They could reduce the number of active beta cells by maybe 5% in an attack. You wouldn't notice it on your blood sugars. But if you've lowered your total beta cell content 5%, and then another attack 10%, and you're eating a lot of sweet foods and keeping your blood sugars high like uh, the standard American diet does with uh, most people who consume it, uh, that elevated blood sugar is going to help destroy beta cells. That's it. It's not that there's a magical uh, big reason. Uh, and I've seen uh, type 1 diabetes attack the siblings of patients of mine. And uh, when uh, I have one family where the mother only contacts me when there's trouble. And uh, she has uh, now three kids with type 1 diabetes and a husband. The husband does very well because he decides what he eats and so on. But she was uh, managing her kids, including the non-diabetic ones, and she thought, she argued with me, said it's unfair to deprive those who are not diabetic. Hmm. And um, uh, we watched this kid who had early signs, and she continued to give him high-carbohydrate foods. You know, his A1C was going up a little bit. Um, and I've seen another case where I was recommending that the daughter of a patient of mine a type 1 patient, where I was recommending not only a low-carb diet, but low-carb diet plus exercise plus um, a medication that's been reported to uh, uh, slow the onset of diabetes, protect beta cells. Um, I believe it was... Genuvia, but could have been Avandia, both of them have uh, been shown to uh, prevent beta cell burnout. But they turned me down on the medication, but they did follow through on a very strict low-carb diet and um, physical exercise. She became an athlete. And this has been going on several years, and her A1C has not gone up any further. We picked her up because she had an A1C of 5.3, which is high for kids. And uh, they stopped it cold with just diet and exercise. Awesome. So I'm pretty convinced 
that that's one of the things you have to do. Yeah, well, in my in my families, I mean, it, it makes things easier if everybody's eating the same food. And well, that's another food. part of it altogether. So, I don't I don't want to feed my youngest son a bunch of uh, candy and sugar when when the oldest son is a real pro at controlling the food that he eats. But um, and he wouldn't want to do that either. But um, yeah, I don't want to have two two type ones be a, a real challenge. Make, yeah, that's right. <laughs> makes makes sense what you're saying. Hey, yeah. let's let's side on the on the you know, on the side of caution, right? You know. That's right. All right. 